Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to run Quantum Espresso on Google Colab. I'll walk you through all the steps from setting up the environment, performing SCF, self-consistent field calculations, to post-processing for band structure and visualization. Let's get started. Step one, setting up the environment. The first step is to set up the necessary environment on Google Colab, which includes installing the required packages and Quantum Espresso itself. Install Conda and Quantum Espresso. We first install Conda and use it to install Quantum Espresso and the ASC, Atomic Simulation Environment package, which will help us in building atomic structures and performing calculations. Run the following code to install the required packages. Before we dive into step two, just a quick note. You can find the entire project in the GitHub repository linked in the video description below. Now let's jump into step two, where we'll be creating a working directory in the Colab content folder. In this next step, we're going to focus on downloading and preparing the crucial input files that we'll need to get started. These files include both the structure and pseudo-potential files, which are essential for running simulations in Quantum Espresso. To begin, we're going to download these input files directly from a GitHub repository. This is a convenient way to access pre-prepared files that we need for our project. Let's walk through this process together. Firstly, we created a new directory on our local system or workspace where we want to store these files. It's best to have them organized in one place. Once you've created your directory, our next step is to download a compressed file from the GitHub repository that contains all the necessary input files. Once the download is complete, simply unzip the file in your new directory. Now, if you want to have your own input files that you would prefer to use for this session, that's perfectly fine too. If you're using Colab Uploader function, which allows you to upload your own files directly into the environment. In today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating using files from my own GitHub repository. Now it's time to create our input file and set up the input parameters. For this, we'll use ASE, a powerful tool that helps us create a calculator for our input. In this case, we'll be working with gallium arsenide as the material. ASE will help us define the structure of GAAs and set up the calculator, which we'll use to run an SCF calculation. Great, now that everything is set up, it's time to move on to the exciting part, performing the SCF calculation. This step is crucial because it helps us calculate the ground state properties of our system, giving us the foundation we need for further analysis. We'll kick off the SCF calculation by running a simple command. Once you've executed it, the pw.x code will take over and start processing. This might take a few minutes, so while the calculation runs, it's the perfect time to step away and grab a quick coffee. Congratulations, you've made it to the finish line. The SCF calculation is complete, and now you can see the total energy of the system. Once everything is wrapped up, feel free to download both the input and output files for your records or further analysis. After downloading the input and output files, it's a good idea to rename them to avoid overwriting them in the next step when we perform the band structure analysis. This way, you'll keep everything organized and avoid any confusion later on.
Now we're ready to take the next step, performing a band structure calculation using the results from our SCF calculation. To do this, we'll set up the calculator specifically for band structure. We'll make a small update to the calculation name list, changing it to bands, and then compute the band structure along a specified path in the Brillouin zone. Now it's time to calculate the band structure using pw.x. To do this, we'll run the following command. It might take a few minutes again, so just sit tight and wait for it to finish. Also, keep in mind that this tutorial is designed to show you how to use Quantum Espresso in Google Colab for educational purposes. For larger systems, you can use the same code on your own local resources by opening a Jupyter Notebook installed through Conda. This gives you the flexibility to work with bigger, more complex materials when needed. Now, we can use ASC's spectrum tools to plot the band structure and visualize the results of our calculations. Once the plot is generated, you can download it along with the image and output files from the band calculation for further analysis. These files will be essential if you want to revisit the results or dive deeper into your data later. At this stage, it's important to rename these new output files to clearly distinguish them from the SCF results you obtained earlier. This will help keep things organized as you move forward with different calculations. To get a better grasp of the differences between the SCF and band structure files, I highly recommend opening them up and inspecting the details. By comparing the input and output of both steps, you'll gain a clearer understanding of how each calculation works and contributes to the overall analysis. It's a valuable hands-on experience that will boost your comprehension of the process. Finally, if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to drop a comment below with your thoughts or any questions you might have. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this one. I'm always eager to hear your feedback and suggestions for future content.